and students feel, actually feel trapped behind those masks. Fortunately, we do have technology right now. And the question is, is there a chance for the technology actually to take away that mask and to show the real face, hopefully you can see my real face now, uh, the real face of the teachers and enable the proper instruction and the proper educational method? That is the question that we have been trying to solve. And in this presentation, I will try to show you the potential that those tools have. And also, I will try to show you how we harness this potential for educational purposes. Today, there is, there is almost 6 billion mobile phone subscriptions, and almost 80% of US students have a mobile phone. Apple actually sold 67, billions, 67 million iPads uh, in the beginning of this year, and it took them only two years to sell that many of them, co com, uh, concerning that they were released just two years ago. It took them 24 years to sell the same amount of Macs computers. Actually, the tablet ownership among college students and ho college high-bound students has more than tripled this year. So can we use this pervasiveness for educational purposes? There are already many that are doing so. And in United Arab Emirates High Colleges of Technology, they have actually announced a deal with Apple not long ago because it was in September this year and they have decided to remove pen and paper from all the campuses and to use only tablets. Similar programs are actually run in many colleges, not only in United Arab Emirates and United States, but all over the world. Medical colleges are a great example of this. So why such a success? And even more important question, can we use it for educational purposes? Can we properly use it into, our, into the advantage of the learners. I have found some answers in the way that humans developed and also some answers in our nature and in the way our brain is formed. Because as it turns out, mobility is in our nature. We have developed always in motion, constant dangers and constant movement in order to gather resources, in order to survive. We are not the strongest, we are not the fastest, but we are definitely the smartest. And we have outwitted other species in adapting to change. But because change is basically a permanent mark assisting our development, it has a certain price. And there is another depiction of our development. This depiction is not so good. And actually it shows that the 20th century was a very difficult period because we seem to have distanced ourselves from our nature and we, we seem to have hunched ourselves over desks and bring ourselves to an immobile lifestyle. So with this latest development, is there a chance that this will actually change? Is there a chance that we can use it to bring ourselves closer to our nature? Because Young people are embracing this technology really, really well. We have had a lot of changes, seems a little bit too many for one generation to grasp, but the young, young digital natives are really good with embracing it. And for example, my son right now is in the last grade of uh, elementary school, and when I asked him, you know, which school you would like to go to, considering middle school, and I really referred more to a profile, I thought, you know, maybe informatics or something like that, and he actually said, I want to go to a school where you have to bring an iPad, when you have to bring tablet. So this is how he perceives it. He really craves it at the school environment, and he's absolutely not the only example because mobiles seem actually much closer to our nature. And when we take into account the biology of our brains, which I will show, and the knowledge about how we learn that we have harnessed during our experience of more than 20 years of Young Digital Planet on the market, and then if we take into account the needs of the learners, we can really harness this potential for the educational purposes. 
because right now we know for sure that each brain is different. There are remarkable variations in the growth patterns between one person and another. Children develop at a different rate, and each brain creates different memories of the seemingly identical experiences because they embed it in the previous knowledge and each person has a different previous knowledge. So each brain learns differently, sorting the information and storing them in different places. We even learn different subjects in a different way, applying different, uh, different ways to approach it. But actually, more and more scientists think that there are as many intelligences as there are people on our planet. And each of those brains learns different. Yet, we educate them in the exactly same way, applying the same standards to everybody. What's really important is that this encoding does really not happen when you are hunched over a desk and you are forced to learn for 45 minutes in a row and with a pen and paper, of course. Why? Why is it not effective? Because the brain needs breaks. It needs time to digest the information. And 10 minutes seems to be a borderline that you can keep attention. Hopefully you can stay a little bit longer with me. I will try to you know, make it really variable. Our brain is also very social, so we need to connect to other brains, so to say. We need to communicate with other people. And it also needs elaboration. And it was Hermann Ebbinghaus, a German psychologist, that actually pioneered the, the subject of memory, and he was testing the memory on himself. His studies were maybe not perfect, but he initiated it, and he ascertained that humans have their memory of newly learned knowledge in a matter of days or weeks, unless they consciously review the learning material. So, as it turns out, in a typical school book application, uh, most students remember only 10% after three to six days. So 90% is forgotten. It has to be repeated in order to strengthen the memory. Only the repetition actually makes the, the neurons to form into clusters, makes the synaptic consolidation stronger. The neurons need to be fed new information in order to keep firing and in order to build those connections. When those connections fade, then the memory is basically lost and you cannot retrieve it. So the information needs to be repeated, but it cannot be repeated in one lump sum, you know, in one lump chunk. It has to be spaced over a certain amount of time. And that strengthens the potential of our brains. And here, the mobile devices are basically perfect tools for that to happen. In order to the encoding to happen properly, elaboration is really necessary. So it's not enough to just read the text and repeat it. Uh, you have to focus on the meaning of the text and to actually make, make it more understanding, real world examples are really necessary because what the brain is really good at is making patterns and combining them and matching them. This is what we have developed. So that's how our education has to be structured. An introduction with the gist on, of the information at the beginning is very important because it turns out that we are remembering using the same pathways that were used at the initial recognition, at the initial learning period, at the initial learning moment. For the encoding to happen in the first place, also attention is extremely crucial because our choice of material, of time, of place, increases the attention. Hopefully you are listening to me right now. And you are listening to me also because you chose to be, to be here. You chose to come here. And you chose to come here because you find the subject interesting or you find, the, or you find it very important, or maybe both. And this is the power to, um, to actually employ into learning. We have to use that information. As the research shows, actually, our culture and our environment really pays, plays extremely important, um, extremely important factor for our learning to happen. Because as it turns out, Asian people really pay attention to like big picture. 
and Western civilizations turn to focus on the central points of the picture, for example. When you live on a desert, you pay attention, I don't know, to snakes, probably to water, to the changes of sand. When you live in the jungle, then you pay attention to even the smallest amounts of changes in the, uh, in the leaves, in the branches, etc. So the question arises, what do you pay attention to when you are surrounded with digital technology, which so many of our young digital natives that we are educating right now are surrounded with? Because right now the information is transferred with a speed that hasn't even been imagined before. So that changes the brain. And such a changed brain later on impacts the environment and waits and it actually expects certain things to happen over there. And yet it's given pen and paper. And the speed of the transfer is definitely up to their potential. Additionally, the activity needs to be stimulating because when, when the activities are emotionally charged, they are better remember, remembered and they are remembered with higher accuracy. So that was some of the theory. Now we actually need to see also the practice since the tablets have already been on the market for quite a while. So the question arises, what do the kids of their own volition do on those tablets? Well, they definitely play games, right? And when you look at those games that the kids play on the tablets, you see that those games share certain characteristics. They give immediate feedback. They are challenging. They are adjusted to the player's level. And actually, they are advancing from one level to, a, to the next pretty fast, but with accordance to the skills of the player. Uh, well, I hope this rings a bell because this is exactly what the research about our brain says, that that's how the brain remembers and learns the best. Many of those games actually require really intensive thinking, yet the kids are having fun and are enjoying it. Sure, we, surely we can use it for educational purposes. The kids also text a lot. They stay on Facebook, they tweet, they uh, find interesting stories on the internet, they search for YouTube videos, they stay connected because the brain is social. It's another activity that's so close to our nature. And this way they also learn because education should be social. It should be about exchanging information. And actually when you look right now, very often the students go to their peers for some information rather than to their teachers because they became an, another important source of knowledge right now. But there are some dangers in using the tablets as they are without any preparation for the education. Because very often the information is fragmented, you have to know how to search for it, and it doesn't always come from a reliable source. So now all we had to do in Young Digital Planet was to develop, design a curriculum based, a complete instruction, a complete education uh, model, product, application, and adapt it to the existing model of use of the, of the mobile devices, and also adapt it to our nature and to the way that research shown that our brain learns. So first, we needed to actually search and between, among the students, to see what their expectations were and what they actually wanted for the future learning to contain. So we have asked many students in small groups detailed questions about their learning routines and about their hopes for the future. The first thing that we found out is that they use a lot of textbooks. And even though they find the process very tiresome and very boring, they are very often combining several textbooks in order to learn one subject. Why do they do this? They do this because internet was a certain as unreliable, because you always have to verify the information that's posted on the internet. And that causes more work and sometimes you may learn the wrong stuff, which is more dangerous and therefore the textbooks are chosen. The students also reported that the biggest problem in the learning for them was the, were the destructions. They didn't know what to focus on. 
Of course, motivation and engagement play a crucial role here. But an interesting thing here was that the students said that they preferred learning on a tablet if on any uh, digital device rather than on computer because many of them found the computers first noisy and secondly too distractible, too distracting. Because in a, on a computer, you tend to have several windows opened. And on a tablet, you usually tend to focus on one task, on one thing. Another problem was a rote learning, memorizing facts that are out of context. Asked for a vision for a perfect resource, they actually communicated the need for one device where they could keep all their notes and everything in a one reliable place where they, everything could be editable, searchable, and it would be easy to carry. And so this is exactly what we did. We actually prepared a lot of curriculum-based materials, and we took into account the mobile medium. Then we have added tons of multimedia to it and arranged it in subject packages that we put into another of our technology solutions, Bookshelf. The bookshelf enables the access from any place and on, at, at any time and on any device. And I will actually have a presentation about this technology tomorrow at 10 right here. So the students were presented samples, different samples of layouts and asked to choose the best one that suited them well. They chose those two and they really praised them for very colorful graphics. They said that it made learning more friendly and more fun. The images were cre clear, but what's important is that the messages were divided into chunks, which was very easy for them to then remember. Empty spaces and white color were definitely uh, thrown away. They found it very difficult uh, to learn from it because the text blends together and it's really um, boring. So there is no surprise that this project because, uh, was, was chosen as the most favorite because it contains actual picture. And the photos, simulations, animations, and videos were something that they were really craving in the educational material. What kind of add-on and additional features they would like to see in their educational materials? And then they were asked to actually categorize them according to their usability and attractiveness. As you can see, they categorized them in a different way according to usability and in a different way according to attractiveness. If you give me your business cards at the end of this presentation, I will make sure to send you a link to this presentation with additional research that is done because there is not enough time for me to show you everything we've got. So we have actually combined the two results and we have come up with the most favorite in-demand uh, features. And we have applied many of them. We have implemented the progress report, but additionally adding the places visited by students and the suggestions regarding future learning, enabling students to track, to store, and to report their progress. Detailed content was created that enables an immediate jump to a chosen subject. Again, a choice of what we want to learn at this specific time and place then highlights that can be filtered according to the date they were made and according to the colors of importance. The same with notes. And also a choice of layout. This all makes the learning really personal and familiar. It changes comprehensive curriculum to more to a student's por portfolio rather than an interactive course. But let's look again at those results of the most favorite features that the students chose. As you can see here, the flashcards and the highlighter are the top two. Well, as the research shows, those are actually pretty ineffective tools for learning. Why are they ineffective? Because they encourage rote learning. You rather memorize what you have highlighted and you should elaborate. So instead of repeating and reading again what you have highlighted, you should talk about it with a friend or ask yourself a question or do something like, like that in order to approach the information from slightly different angle. 
And so why students actually do use this? Because those are the most encouraged tools at school. That's what the teachers tell them to use that that really allows. And of course, with pen and paper, you cannot really do much more. Actually, if the book doesn't belong to you, you cannot even do that, right? So students learned to use pencils, even though they preferred the colors. We decided to use something actually much more efficient. And to make the description more appealing, I'm going to use an example that I just had with my son when I was trying to uh, prepare with him and see how he learns uh, for the test in history. He was doing a homework from a book, of course, and he got really irritated and said, oh my God, mom, they are not giving the answer, you know, in the book and yet they require me to know it here. How am I supposed to know that? I thought, well, obviously the answer must be in the book. So I looked and sure enough, I found it. So I said, well, it's here. Why couldn't you find it? And he just blurted out, because it wasn't bolded out. And I'm like, what? Is, as it turns out, he's a clever boy and he figured out that all the questions that were asked at the end of the, each chapter were about the bolded stuff. So he was just looking for the bolded, bolded phrases and then answering, rewriting the story from the book exactly word by word. Well, if you think that that's learning, then no, I'm sorry, it's not. You are not learning at all. You're, you are going to forget it the very next day, absolutely for sure. But with our multimodal inputs, such tricks are impossible. Right here, you can see that the learners are required to watch a video, and then they are required to answer the questions based on what they saw in the video. There are no answers ready, uh, you know, that you can rewrite. You have to watch and understand. So the learners actually need to draw conclusions. They need to compare different informations. Such tricks are also unnecessary. Because as you can see from those different simulations that I have filmed right here, you can see that the visuals are actually make the messages very clear and very understandable. Please. And our solutions contain simulations, animations, videos, and slideshows. And these are combined actually with different types of tests like filling the gaps, connecting elements, or choosing the correct answer, which requires your understanding of the process of information. Because learning is not about repetition and rewriting. We are all driven to multisensory ex experiences because we were given five senses for a reason, and those senses developed together, which means that they are always working together. Visual sense seems to be the strongest, yet those different sensory inputs influence each other, and it's actually called a multimodal reinforcement. Our ancestors, ancestors developed in a multisensory world. Our brain developed with a lot of visual stimuli, very important for our survival. And so combining those senses, stimulating several senses at once, improves learning significantly. Combining sight and sound actually increases the learning process. Adding touch to it increases the recognition. Many people, when you think about it, very often visualize the information that they read because the, the, our brain actually craves the multisensory input. And the more visual the input, the more likely it will be remembered. Mobile comprehensive curriculum enables visual inputs in slideshows, for example, then it enables visual and audio inputs in videos. Usually, the air temperature in February ranges from minus 12 to minus 16 degrees Celsius, and in July, between 4 and 6 degrees Celsius. So warm clothing is a must. The plant life on Spitsbergen is... Also Inside our airways, animations. there is an organ that enables us to speak. The voice box, or larynx, is constructed out of cartilage rings connected by ligaments and muscles. One of the cartilages, the epiglottis, seals the entrance to our voice box shut when we swallow food or liquids. The folds inside the voice box are the vocal cords. 
Depending on how tight the muscles are, the vocal cords expand or contract. There is also a touch input. The gesture navigation so famous in tablets changed the mobile comprehensive curriculum into rich, immersive learning experience. Using their tablets and smartphones, the kids actually have the learning at their fingertips, literally. And it's really fun to play with. In fact, it was very, very interesting for me because at first I worked, you know, to prepare this presentation on a desktop at my computer. And the kids looked at it, you know, and they looked, but oh, mom is working again. But then I brought a tablet with the whole product installed on it. And they just grabbed it away from me and they started playing with different videos, you know, even though it was a bit beyond their level because they were interested. That's the power of the mobile device that we try to harness. Mobile comprehensive curriculum is actually designed to take advantage of the three R's of mobile learning, which is review, refresh, and reinforce. Because learning with mobile devices has been proved to be more effective if short lessons are to be practiced, which is the review. And if it is used to highlight important points, which is the refresh. And to test learning recollections, which is the reinforce. Practical examples make the process really comprehensive. The acute angle, right angle, obtuse angle, and straight angle are all salient angles. Look carefully how a protractor should be placed Those to measure the angle. Animations the center of the protractor must be placed at the vertex, covered. crossing point, of the angle. And one side must go through the beginning of the numbered scale. The Let's draw a 68-degree angle. We draw a straight line or ray. Place the protractor, find 68 degrees, mark that point at the second side and draw a ray. Mobile devices provide a consistent learning experience because a student can really access the same educational materials from anywhere. The device can be used also for fun as well as for learning. And this actually encourages the feeling of ownership, which increases the willingness to use the device. But beware, because the mobile technology on its own does not guarantee success for learning. You can see around that many of the mobile devices has been just used to copy the materials that are already everywhere accessible in print. Technology is just a tool. So in order to use it efficiently, you have to apply the knowledge about human nature, about the brain, and about the possibilities that this device gives, and then design a content co considering all those aspects. So our solution is curriculum-based. It is complete and in inclu includes everything that is necessary for revising knowledge on science and maths, and also on humanities, geography, and business studies very soon. As you could see, it is adjusted to human perception and enables interactivity. It is method methodologically reliable because it is based on one of Sonoma's leading educational publishers' materials. And we applied many of the gaming aspects as well here. Because the units are short, they are engaging, and the challenge is progressing together with the learner with the raising mastery of the learner. Instant feedback helps students to identify the right answer to any question. They failed to answer correctly. This immediate feedback increases motivation and engagement, which are crucial in learning. Because learning without feedback is actually like driving a car without controls. So immediate feedback is very important and was very important part of our application. Apart from sounds to correct and wrong answers, we provided immediate tests at the end of the lessons together with immediate progress reports. And the activities are very interesting, which makes them easier to learn and remember. They are uh, user-friendly and very intuitive and also they use up-to-date design, bright colors, and impressive col and inspiring colors. 
And since the device is personal and handheld, or not even that, as you can see, and it's very often customized with the apps and the content, therefore, it feels more personal, and the learning feels more pers personal and engaging. Because the research shows that the environment can enhance learning because the stress kills the learning. Therefore, if the environment is really comfortable and peaceful, then you can learn much better. The schools definitely do not fulfill that. The stress is an imminent part of every school curriculum. In an ideal world, the school day would be different because it would actually apply the needs, uh, the needs that the, the rhythms that the kids have. The kids would have time to talk to each other. The school would start later because the kids at that age actually do require more rest. The research shows that the teenagers actually release the necessary hormones for sleep two hours later than uh, than at any other age. Therefore, they want to go to bed later, but they also want to get up later. The schools don't care about it. There should be a time for the kids to digest the information, and there should be a time for them to talk and to be engaged. In the ideal future school, the arts and music would also be implemented, integrated into the curriculum, because they are actually increasing creativity and flexibility and the divergent thinking. And so in our product, the arts and music will be implemented very soon. The course already consists of more than 3,000 interactive activities and exercises. It includes build-in assessment, over 3,000 videos, animations, interactive simulations, more than 11,000 photos and illustrations and well over 16,000 pages of engaging interactive activities. All that really make comprehensive curriculum the best revision tool for any exam and for any test that is to come. It makes students interested in learning, which is the key aspect of the whole process. Comprehensive curriculum is the perfect solution for K-12 educational publishers or distributors looking to generate the revenue from ready-made digital products and content. Because this engaging interactivity lessons utilize HTML5, giving the publishers the flexibility of delivering the content online and on any mobile device. Additionally, using the Bookshelf app, students can read textbooks whenever and wherever they want. And they can have everything stored in one place, accessible anytime and on any device. Since our product is so complex and rich in multimedia, we have thought of providing the assets management system that actually provides a way to manage all the content and to search and browse various multimedia files as they are uh, assisted with metadata that's very uh, detailed. It also creates different versions of the tasks uh, in order to provide, to store and track all the changes and all the work done. The interactive content editor that is one that is also a part of our offer is a sophisticated tool designed for editing premium quality content written in HTML5 scripting language. It is a really great tool for localizing, adapting the content, enriching it, customizing it to make it personal. And the content and graphic design are actually separated, which makes it really very easy to change the graphic design of any course. Translations of instructions are also very easy and simple to be done. If you have any questions, or would like to see the mobile comprehensive curriculum actually working. We have many mobile devices, uh, many tablets on our stand with the co co uh, comprehensive curriculum loaded onto it. And so you can play with it, you can see how it works. Our stand is right across here, it's E428. And please, if you provide me the business cards, then I will make sure to send you the link to this presentation with additional research as we have done extensively. <laughs> and a lot of work. Thank you very much for your attention.